الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. الحمد لله for his blessings. I'm very humbled to come and speak in front of you today. But I'm more humbled to speak in the presence of Imam Ibrahim Ibn Ahmad, who is one of my teachers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for your character, your personality, your knowledge that you spread in the last few years. Alhamdulillah, this message is blessed and fortunate to have you here, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you, inshallah, and your family as well. Um, today's topic, inshallah, is going to be uh, short and sweet, very brief, about fundamental concept in Islam that most of the Muslims uh, misunderstood or misunderstand, as well as the non-Muslims -Muslim, as well. Today's speech is about faith, F-A-T-E, the predestination. القدر خيره وشره which is the sixth article of faith according to the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so today inshallah we are going to have a deep journey to have a full understanding of what is faith and how can we deal with it in our life many Muslims and non-Muslims think alike that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined everything in this life the death, the wealth, professions, health, accidents anything and everything, including a man and getting astray, including on the right path and in the wrong path, including being a mu'min or a disbeliever, kafir. And they support what they think or what they believe in with the ayat from the Qur'an. Allah SWT said in many ayat from the Qur'an, وَمَنْ يُطْلِ لِلَّهِ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ When Allah SWT sets astray somebody, there's nobody can guide them. When Allah SWT guides someone, there is nobody in the world can guide them again. So they say, look, the Quran is saying, Allah is misguiding me. So I'm really predestined to be a criminal, disbeliever, a jerk, or a believer, or a good man. This is predestined for me. So I really have nothing to do with this. This is predestined for me based on the Quran as Allah SWT says. Many, believe, many Muslims think that way. So now today, inshallah, we're going to take you on a short journey to have a full understanding of what faith is. But before we start the journey, I would like to mention to you the seven layers of Hidayah. Seven darajat al Hidayah. The seven layers of guidance according to the Quran. The first guidance that Allah SWT has given mankind all in general is Hidayat al Fitra, the innate nature guidance. And this is supported by the ayah from the Quran that says, Ibn Kathir give the interpretation of this ayah that right after the creation of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped on the back of Adam and he saw all of the souls of mankind in the palm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to all of the souls of mankind when the souls were created way earlier than the creation of the physical bodies of mankind Allah spoke to all souls of kafirs and muslims, disbelievers, astrays, misguided, all of them says, Alastu barabikum, am I not your lord? And all of them says, Bala, yes, you are our Lord. And Allah SWT gave them the warning. And taquri ya luqiyamat, inna kunna anharka anhada rafi'i. I warn you all to forget this fact, that indeed I am your Lord. I am your only Lord that deserves to be worshipped. So all of us, when we were in the alam al-arwah, when we were created as souls prior to the creation, in our physical body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the oath from us. So this is, the, this is known as the covenant. All mankind has, has given, have given this covenant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is indeed the only Lord and the only one deserves to be worshipped. So this is in our innate fitrah. It's, it's part of our being, our souls, our creations. And this is proven by many, many theoretical uh, 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 facts. When people get astray on an island or so, you find that they pray to someone, superior power, even if they have not heard about any religion. The story goes on and on that really supports that 
it is in our belt that we know the creation of Allah SWT. In America, 94% of people believe in God, some sort of God, a form of God, 94%. The only thing to support the Israel, the only thing the mankind in the history of mankind since Adam until now they agree on is that there is God that deserves to be worshipped. They differ a lot how they worship their God, the nature of this God, the origin of this God, but they all tend to worship something, superior, superior power, supreme power, God, except a very tiny portion which are the atheists and the agnostics. The majority of mankind have this feeling inside them, which is supported by this act. So that's the first level of Hidayah, Hidayat al -Fatwa. The second one is Hidayat al khilqa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates things, mankind, animals, plants, and then he teaches them how to live. الَّذِي خَلَقَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ ثُمَّ هَدَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that he is the one who created everything and then give them the hidayah of how to live. You can possibly see this very easy of any baby that just born, how to suckle in the mother's breast. Who taught this baby how to suck in the mother's breast? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part of the hidayat al khilqa When people are created, they are also coming with distinction between the good and the bad. Let me give you an example. If you bring a thousand people and then you ask them to choose the beautiful over the ugly of, excuse my language, a field of bad stuff like human waste and another field of flowers. All mankind would choose the flowers. Why? Because this is built in their nature. To choose the right thing, the beautiful thing. All mankind agrees on that. Who told them this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is Hidayat al khilqa which is number two. Number three is Hidayat al rusul Hidayat al rusul or the Albiya. The guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to all mankind through the prophets and the messengers that he sent to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never judge people and send them to paradise or hellfire unless or until he sends them a messenger to show them the right path so they become liable and accountable for their actions and their deeds. So this is the third type of hidayah. Hidayat al-Rusul wa al-Anbiya. The fourth type is Hidayat al-Qutub. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent many holy books. The Quran was the last one of them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as the Bur, Suhuf Musa, Suhuf Ibrahim, Al-Tawrah, al Injil, six of them are mentioned in the Quran. There is some hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 110 holy books. 50 of them were sent to Sheaf or Seth, child of Abraham. That's one hadith. Regardless of the number, we know for a fact that Allah SWT sent these holy books also to guide mankind, to give them guidance and the right path, which is a generous act of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is the fourth one, which is Hidayat al-Qutub. The fifth one is Hidayat al-Ikhtiyar, the guidance to choose between the right and the wrong. And this is supported by the ayah from the Quran, وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equipped us, our mind, our body, to choose between the right and the wrong path. إِنَّ هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we guided mankind to the right path, and some of the mankind, they chose the right path, they became thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Him for His bounties, but the rest of the humans are astray and disbelievers. A third ayah that supports the concept of the free will choice is The scholar said the interpretation of this ayah as follows that Allah SWT prior to the creation of Adam he presented the free will to a samawat, the heavens and al ard the earth and the mountains and mankind, all of them said, no, this is a huge responsibility, we cannot carry that. But the mankind says, yes, I can carry that responsibility of having the choice between the good and the bad. 
إنه كان ظلوما جهولا. الله said that this was not the right choice for the mankind. They basically overestimated their power of choosing the right over the over the wrong. But this ayah supports the concept that mankind have free will. They choose what they are going to be accountable for. How many now? You count. I think you slept and I'm speaking. <laughs> That the fitra, the khilqa, the rusul, the box, the ikhtiyar. The sixth one is hidayat al-rashad. Hidayat al-rashad. For those who choose the right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will push them further into, into that right path. While the deen ahtada is ibnahum hud. For those who choose, chose, in the past tense, It shows the right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indulge them further into that right path. Will push them further into that right path. But who shows first? Is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the individual? Which one? Allah or the individual choose the right path? The individual chose the right path. So they choose first. They choose first to, to be in that daily path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will push them further, motivate them, will emphasize their going into that right path. So as you can see from this ayah, the choice is first to mankind, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide more guidance. The seventh and the last one is hidayah ila al-jannah. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hada wa ma kunna li nahtadiya la li an hadana Allah. So the last type of hidayah is in the hereafter. Six of them in the, this life, the last one is in the hereafter. When the people are ready, judge, ready to go to paradise, they will say to themselves, Alhamdulillah, they hadana li had. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is guiding us, us to the path of paradise, to the way of paradise, to the street of paradise. That is the last type of hidayah. So these are the seven types of hidayah. From everything that I said, you can see that mankind indeed have free will, have a choice. However, that choice is not covering the entire area of our life. So yes, we do have a choice to come to this masjid and pray behind the imam and, and we have the choice to sit and listen to the Quran and attend Islamic lessons, etc. Don't we? This is our free will. And because of that, we will be rewarded in the hereafter for this free will or the choices that falls under the free will. The other fault of the life that we handle are the predestined. And these are things that we have no control over. What are the examples of that? Death, disease, calamities, disasters, na na national hurricanes and uh, uh, volcanoes and, and accidents, anything that's out of our control, these are predestined. Allah SWT has prescribed them on us. And because of that, we are not accountable, accountable for them and the get out. So life is two categories. Either we have a choice in and we have accountability, Of in the hereafter, Allah SWT will judge us about our choice, and the other part is predestined. And we have no choice of and we are not accountable for. So, if we really have this concept, our life becomes very easy. The final results of anything that we do is predestined, it's in the hands of Allah SWT. So, if we fully embody and internalize the fact that The result of me getting that degree or that certificate or passing that exam is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My job is to be sincere, to spend the effort and the time, and to try my best to plan, strategize, take all the means to reach that destination. But whether I get what I anticipated for or not, it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our life becomes easy. And we will never sweat or be stressed whatsoever. That completely removes that aspect of stress from our life. Think deeply that the results are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are not accountable for them. You are accountable for the planning, taking the means, taking the actions, exerting all the possible efforts and mental and uh, mental effort and time to reach your destination. That's what you are accountable for. But the results are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very much supported by many hadith in the Quran. Look at the Prophet, the first hadith in أربعين نووية عن رياض الصالحين وارزة إنما الأعمال والنيات وإنما كل يبرئ المناوة All the deeds are accounted by what? By the final destination? No. By the intention. The preceding intention. 
and the action that you take to reach this destination. That's what you get rewarded for, not the final destination. If you wake up before fast, we take a shower, we make wudu, get rest, and have pure intention to come to the masjid, and then you find a flat tire. What happened? Do you get the reward of the praying in the masjid or not? Yes, you do, because you took the, the effort, and you planned for it, you have the intention. Whether you reach the masjid or not, it doesn't really matter. Allah SWT knows your intention. If you study very, very hard for an exam or, or a course or, or a certificate or a degree, but then in the day of the exam, again, you find a flat tire or construction in the street or the bridge, part of it fell, fell and you are not able to cross over to, to reach your destination to take the exam and you fail to reach there. Are you accountable for that, for that in front of Allah SWT? The answer is no, because you took all of the means and the planning Yes, you are accountable in front of the people or the human organizations, but this is very secondary to your image with Allah SWT. So, the sum of what I said today, inshallah, is the following. The life that we live in comprises two categories. The free will, things that you do under your control, and this part is what you are responsible for, you are accountable for, and you will be judged upon in the day of judgment. The other category of things that happen to you and me and every human being is the predestined. Things that you have no control over. And this part you are not accountable for. Allah will not judge you, punish you, or reward you for, for it. Because it's predestined and you have nothing to do with it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.